part of the Byron Bay Surf Festival it takes place away from the beach, in fact a significant amount of it, and there are many workshops available throughout the, uh, the long weekend of the festival, one of which is Tim Baker's writing workshop. Uh, Tim Baker is a renowned writer in the surf industry and produced many books of his own and also been uh, editor on Trax magazine yeah. and a contributor to, to several surf magazines around the world um, for a, a many number of years. So Tim, your part in the, uh, in the festival, um, we're seeing a much more divergent look at surfing um, with the surf festival, away from the professionalism of it yeah. and into the culture and the, the creativity around the surf industry. How, does he, how do you see your part as a writer um, within that community? Yeah, I guess for a while I felt like there's a bit of a kind of cultural renaissance going on in surfing, you know, and I think after years of um, kind of surfers feeling like they're just kind of being marketed to, they're, they're interested in taking back their culture and telling their own stories. Um, so I guess I see myself playing a bit of a role in just facilitating or empowering people to have that self-belief and confidence to tell their own stories and believe that their own stories are valid. Um, so, you know, you don't have to be a professional surfer or a surf legend who's done these kind of earth-shattering deeds to have a story that's worth telling. Yep. Um, I'm a great believer that everyone's got a great story to tell. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm inspired by giving people, yeah, the kind of tools and the motivation to... Yeah, tell their own stories and um, and just kind of believe that they're worth telling. And yep. um, you know, I think that's kind of how we learn in life too, by sharing stories and exchanging stories. And I think when it's kind of one way traffic, when we're just kind of being bombarded with marketing material, that that the value of storytelling gets a bit lost. Yeah. Yep. So your workshop itself, uh, what's what format is it going to is it going to follow? Are you going to actually get people to begin writing their own stories within the class? Yeah, absolutely. We do. Um, I'm a great believer in, uh, I guess, what I'd call free writing. Uh -huh. So I had an experience really early on, um, and I kind of tell this story when people ask me, kind of, how do you, how did you become a surf writer? You know, it was a HSC Year 12 English exam, and I had this experience of just kind of writing an essay kind of off the top of my head in a high-pressure exam. And, having that experience of just getting completely lost in the story and just having that stream of consciousness kind of flow experience. And it's a really wonderful thing when it happens when you feel like the words of the story is just kind of pouring out of you. Yep. And I've always remembered that and always kind of held on to that. And um, so I'm a great believer in people just kind of getting out of the way of their own storytelling. Um, you know, one of the things I say is that I can think there's kind of two distinct processes to, to writing. There's, there's the writing itself and there's the editing. And yep. I think they're completely different processes that probably use different sides of the brain even. And I think a lot of people get tripped up mixing the two together. Yep. So you picture your classic writer, you know, bent over a typewriter, pulling sheets of paper out, screwing them up and throwing them in the bin. That's someone who's trying to write and edit at the same time, yep. and they're criticising themselves as they go. So I always encourage people just when they're writing, just write yep. um, and not sort of edit and self-criticise as they're going. Yep. And and try and get into that kind of flow state. And so you know you might not have perfect grammar and perfect spelling, perfect punctuation and structure in that kind of initial just sort of purging or brain dumping of your story but then you, you leave it and you come back in another moment a different frame of mind and then you apply that really critical analytical um, process to editing and structuring and just giving yep. it the kind of spit and polish that will make it a finished piece of work um, and I guess I like the idea too that when you do get into that kind of flow free writing state you can really surprise yourself yeah you know you're kind of accessing your unconscious or subconscious mind and stuff dwells in there that you might not be aware of yeah and I think that's when the kind of magic happens yeah, yeah. and surfing itself as a sport um, how do you find the the inspiration of that do you sometimes get uh, possibly not writer's block but a, yeah. 
a slowing down of your ideas and your, yeah. your flow of ideas and then go off for a surf and find inspiration in the waves? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm never more productive than just kind of getting into work after a morning surf. And, you know, there's something about that um, time in the ocean and there's all kinds of theories about it, I guess, too, you know, whether you're sucking in negative ions and, you know, the water molecules in your body uh, harmonising with the water of the ocean <laughs> or, you know, you can get kind of pretty esoteric about it. But whatever the explanation, it definitely charges you up. And, um, you know, I always like that feeling of sitting down to work with kind of water draining out your nose. <laughs> you know, like you're definitely um, able to just, you know, it's like you're um, downloading that experience you've just had very kind of directly. Um, and I think, yeah, the end, the ocean's an endless source of inspiration. And I'm kind of inspired by, um, you know, Joseph Campbell and the concept of the hero's journey. Yep. You know, a lot of classic storytelling um fits the template of the hero's journey that Campbell wrote about and I think surfing makes great subject matter for storytelling because it really fits that classic um, story template yeah so you yeah. know you, you're kind of going off on a quest in search of a goal and you've got to overcome all sorts of obstacles along the way and you come back to um, your ordinary life somehow renewed and reinvigorated and um, you know every surfer would kind of be able to relate to that yeah. And that's the sort of basis of a lot of our great stories over time. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, surfing just very naturally fits that story template. It doesn't have to be kind of fitted and squeezed in to fit um, what makes a compelling story. It just has all the elements right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're just endless, you know, characters in surfing. Um, I don't think... Yeah, as much as people might think surfing's quite a specialist little niche, you can kind of come at it from whatever angle you like. You know, it can be a portal to look at um, history or sociology or meteorology, yeah. <laughs> anthropology, you know, all sorts yeah. of ologies. Yeah. Um, or if you're interested in surfboard design or, you know, competition or whatever it might be, there's a whole lot of angles to attack it from, so... Yeah, it seems to stay pretty fresh, um, which is lucky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's strange. Surfing has, um, I think, it's possibly the most cross, cross genre, cross gender, cross class sport you can possibly get. You yeah. Know, astrophysicists and homeless people, you know, sharing yeah. the lineup. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's quite that, incredible. That's kind of the story of surfing in our time, you know, that it's so diverse now and, you know, it used to be considered this one kind of narrow subculture that, you know, you, you could identify a surfer by their look and their dress and their language yeah. and their manner and now it's so diverse that, yeah, as you say, surfers come from all walks of life and um, I guess as much as um, I'm known for writing about surfing, I'd, I'd like to think that anyone interested in writing could kind of get something out of the workshops and I, yep. I guess I've sort of had that feedback over the years um, and I really like the idea of working with kind of younger people too getting them excited about sort of reading and writing and storytelling and yep. I guess those old-fashioned crafts that you know sometimes get subsumed by modern entertainment you know technology and yep. um, DS's and iPods and <laughs> you know stuff like that so you know you can see people respond to just that basic old um, art and craft of storytelling and it's deep in our DNA you know people have told stories since we first learned to communicate yeah and um, so I think people respond to it on a real yeah sort of deep instinctive level that you know this is something yeah humans have been doing since they started daubing on the walls of caves yep. you know <laughs> yeah back in the day yeah yeah Speaking of surfers with uh, fascinating stories, you've just uh, finished assisting with and writing a forward for Hannah Beth Luke's new book, which is Shockwaves. Yeah. Uh, the fascinating story of a, a girl who was involved in the Bali bombings and helped out a lot with the, uh, the people who were horrifically injured there. Yeah, yeah. How was that experience for you? Um, it was amazing. I mean, as much as I was kind of helping Hannah Beth tell her story and I kind of helped help edit the manuscript and guided her a little bit through the kind of, um, I guess, the publishing process, 
she taught me just as much. I mean, for one, just the way she kind of embarked on the whole self-publishing thing with just this kind of fearless, um, undaunted, you know, just determination to kind of do what she had to do to get her story out to the world. Um, and then just hearing the, um, the sort of substance of her story, you know, someone who's just confronted things that most of us could never imagine. Um, you know, I don't think I'd really read anything or really considered the reality of what happened at the Sari Club on that day um, 10 years ago um, and just the human horror of it. And to meet someone who's been through that and it hasn't made her hard or bitter or vengeful or kind of intolerant of other cultures, it's just made her determined that no one else should have to go through that and yep. has motivated her to campaign for peace and confront world leaders and take them to task for the war on terror and she's, she's a remarkable young woman and, and now she's, um, you know, she's checking out the whole coal seam gas issue and she's doing a PhD on that whole thing. Wow. Um, so she's a really inspiring person and I've got a lot out of working with her, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Baker, thank you very much. Uh, Hannah Beth Luke's book, Shockwave, will be presented at the, the Byron Bay Surf Festival. And Tim himself will be also featured in the festival hosting a writing workshop, as he said himself, not necessarily predominantly surfing as the, uh, as the impetus for the writing, just writing in general. Um, a fascinating workshop to be held on Saturday the 27th of October. Tim Baker, thank right. you. Thanks, Simon. Cheers, mate. Let them flow.